All right, today we're going to do some last quiz review because we've got one more real quiz before we maybe do some review quizzes, but this is day 125. We can just call this last real quiz review. All right, so now this quiz is a no calculator quiz. And the topics on it are L'Hopital's rule, um, derivative of an inverse, derivatives and integrals, Involving inverse trig, um, it is going to be sine inverse and tan inverse only though, technically those are the only ones that are on the AP, we did cosine inverse, it's just a negative of the sine inverse one. It's not on the AP, I just couldn't resist not doing it because we did sine and tangent. And finally, integration by parts. Okay, so those are your topics. Basically everything we haven't had a quiz on yet. So today we're just going to do some review questions. These questions would be good to have in your notes when you're taking the quiz because they're all on this and doing questions today, similar to questions that are on the quiz. Okay, so number one, given y equals 2 arctan of 2x plus radical 1 minus 4x squared, find y prime. So this quiz is all short answer, no multiple choice, so that's good. There's partial credit on everything. You are going to have derivatives. So remember arctan is the same as sine inverse, or tan inverse. So if I wanted to find y prime, what's going to happen with this 2 that's out front? It's just going to stay out front, so it's a constant. 2 times Okay, what's the integral of, or derivative, sorry, what's the derivative of arctan? That's 1 over 1 plus whatever the stuff inside is. In this case, it's 2x squared. This is also chain rule, so I have to multiply by the derivative of that stuff inside. It's going to be times 2. Okay, and then this is just an old derivative. It's a stuff under a radical, stuff to the one-half power. So it's going to be one-half times the stuff to the negative one-half power times derivative of that stuff would be times negative 8x. Okay, now let's clean it up a little bit. This first piece, we're going to end up having 4 on top, 2 times 2. 4 over 1 plus, if you distribute that squared, it would be 4x squared, minus, now here the 2 and the 8 can cancel, that becomes a 4, so we'd have a negative 4x on top, what would be on the bottom? It would be a radical 1 minus 4x squared. I just realized a mistake, sorry. We could call this plus. It's plus a negative 4x. I think I originally I was thinking I was going to put a minus. Just turn that plus negative into a minus 4x over that. Either way is fine. 
Okay, and that's your answer. So expect some derivatives similar to that. Okay, number two. Limit as x goes to zero of cotangent of x all over cotangent of 2x. Okay, now at zero, cotangent of zero is actually undefined because here's zero. It's the point one zero, it's quadrantal. Tangent is sine over cosine, y over x. So cotangent is cosine over sine, x over y. You'd have one over zero. This is undefined. And you can't evaluate undefined. So we would first need to change this into an equivalent expression that wouldn't be undefined. Limit as x goes to zero of, are you okay with me just flipping it and saying this would be tan 2x on top over tangent of x on the bottom? Now at least when I plug in zero, they're not undefined. What is the problem? Well, I get zero over zero. Tangent of zero is zero. So we get zero over zero. That means I'm allowed to use L'Hopital. So L'Hopital's rule, remember, says take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and then try evaluating. What's the derivative of tangent? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So it would be secant squared of 2x times what? 2, because of chain rule, over secant squared of x. And remember my notation. It has to say evaluated at x equals 0. Otherwise, it's not equivalent. Okay, so now, I don't love evaluating secant. How else could I write that? Well, I could leave the 2 on top. I could call this cosine squared of x over cosine squared of 2x. Kind of similar. Evaluated still at x equals 0. Kind of similar to how I did this first step here. Secant's 1 over cosine. So I should be able to just flip the side both of those are on. The 2 didn't flip because that's just being multiplied. That stays up top. So now when I plug in 0, what's cosine of 0? It's 1. So this is 2 times 1 over 1. And the final answer is 2. Okay, so I know that was kind of tricky. But I wanted to do one that was tricky so that you could refer to it when you're studying for that test tomorrow. Number three. Let's do an integral. Let's find the integral of x to the fourth times ln of x dx. What type of integration are you going to do with this? Remember, there's only a couple types on this quiz. Integrals involving inverse trig, it's not even a fraction, so it's not inverse trig. But you have two different functions multiplied with variables involved. So this is integration by parts. So this is where you want to think, lip it. What would you want to make u? Well, the first thing in lip it is logs, and we got a log in here. So u is ln of x which means what's dv, the extra pieces, x to the fourth dx. Okay, so what would du be? The curve of ln of x is 1 over x dx. What's v going to be? If you go the antiderivative of x to the fourth, it's x cubed over 3. Nope, that's a lie, sorry. Hopefully you're all screaming at the computer right now. X to the fifth over five. Okay, so then the parts formula is uv minus the integral of v du. So u is ln of x. Oops, times v. 
and v is x to the fifth over five minus the integral of v x to the fifth over five times du, which is one over x dx. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. We've got x to the fifth over five ln of x minus, now I'm going to see that this x is going to cancel with this one, make that x to the fourth. What could I pull out front of this integral? That over 5, so I could do 1 fifth times the integral of x to the 4th dx. Now I can do that integral. So this is going to be x to the 5th over 5 ln of x minus 1 fifth times x to the 5th over 5 again plus c. So I end up with x to the fifth over five ln of x minus x to the fifth over five plus c. I might over 25, sorry, gotta multiply those, plus c. All right, so that's kind of the level of integration by parts I'm gonna be looking at tomorrow. I don't think there's any crazy double integration by parts or anything like that. All right, I'm gonna flip the page. Here's number four. Let's do the integral of 5x over 1 plus 9x squared dx. What do you see with this one? All right, this probably has an inverse trig involved because it's a fraction. I've got a 1 plus on the bottom. That makes me think inverse tan right away. What's one thing I can do? We can for sure pull this 5 out. So this is going to be 5 times the integral of x over 1 plus 9x squared dx. Now what? Well, it's tricky. There's an x on top. So originally I told you I was thinking inverse trig, because that's what you'd probably think of first tomorrow. But if there's an x on top, and I have an x squared on the bottom, this is actually just regular u sub. If I say let u equal 1 plus 9x squared, what's du over dx? It's 18x. So if my missing piece is just x dx, then I would have du over 18 equals x dx. So when I sub in, I'm going to end up with 5 eighteenths out front, the 5 from before. Now I just pulled out this over 18 piece times the integral of, I let the whole bottom be u. This is just 1 over u du now. The x went away with the x dx. What's the integral of 1 over u? ln. It's ln of the absolute value of u plus c. Don't forget about the absolute value part. So my answer is 5 eighteenths ln times the absolute value of 1 plus 9x squared plus c. So just be aware, I might throw one like that on the quiz tomorrow also. It doesn't have anything to do with inverse trig. And again, the way I no noticed that it wasn't was I need a 1 on top for inverse trig. I'm not going to be able to get rid of this x because I can't pull out a variable. So it had to be regular u sub so I could take care of that x by taking my du piece. Okay, now compare that to this next one, the integral of 5 over 1 plus 9x squared dx. Obviously very similar to this last one without the x on top. Without that x, I can't do regular u sub because the derivative gives me an x. This is going to be inverse trig. My first step still the same, pull that 5 out, but now I have a 1 on top over 1 plus 9x squared dx. So if I can't use regular u sub, instead of letting u equal, what do we want to let u squared equal? Remember, I want this bottom piece to be something squared. So let u squared equal 9x squared. So that means what's u? 3x. And the derivative of that's not a problem, because du over dx is just 3, a constant. My leftover piece is just dx, so du over 3 
equals dx. So now what's going to be out front? 5 thirds. 5 thirds times the integral of 1 over 1 plus, remember 9x squared becomes u squared, du. This is inverse tan or arctan. So 5 thirds times tan inverse of u plus c. And just remember you're putting u in, not u squared. So it's 5 thirds times tan inverse of 3x plus c. Okay, so watch out for those different types of integrals. All right, number six. If dy over dx is equal to 24 over radical 16 minus x squared, find y. All right, so this is just another way to ask an integral question. I'm giving you the derivative. I want to find the original function. So y is going to equal the integral of 24 over radical 16 minus x squared dx. Now when I see this, do you think this is going to be regular u sub, or is it going to be some sort of inverse trig? There's an x squared on the bottom and no x on top, so it's got to be inverse trig. We need the 24 out front times the integral of 1 over. The other thing with inverse trig integrals is we always need a 1 in this spot. Whether there's a radical or not, this needs to be a 1. So remember how I did that. I factored that 16 out, leaving me with 1 minus x squared over 16 dx. So what else can I pull out front in addition to this 24? That radical 16 can get pulled out front now, and radical 16 is 4. So it's going to be 24 over 4 times the integral of 1 over radical 1 minus x squared over 16. That's the 16 there. dx. We need to use our fancy u sub. So let u squared equal x squared over 16, which means u is what? x over 4. du over dx would be 1 fourth x. Derivative is 1 fourth. So if the leftover piece is dx, that's going to equal 4 du. Okay, so when all is said and done, we're going to end up with this 4 is going to be out front with all this other stuff. So 4 times 24 over 4 times the integral of 1 over radical 1 minus u squared du. Okay, obviously these 4s cancel. And now I have 24. What's this integral turn into? The radical is the sine inverse one. So 24 sine inverse of u plus c. I didn't give you an initial condition, so the best you can tell me is that y equals 24 sine inverse of u, which was x over 4. So sine inverse of x over 4 plus c. Now, if I had given you an initial condition, like if I said x is 0 when y is 12 or something, I'd have to plug 0 in here, 12 over here, and figure out what c is, which hopefully you'd be able to do. Okay, I'm going to flip the page one more time, a couple more examples, and then I'll be done. Number 7. Number 7 is one that I would think you would need to review. If f of x is x to the 3 fourths and the derivative
of f inverse of x at x equals 8. Okay, derivative of an inverse. Kind of a weird process. You did pretty good on the homework with this. Remember when we did this originally, we usually called the inverse g of x. And that's just, again, because I don't want to say f inverse prime. The notation gets ugly. So if I want to find the derivative of f inverse, which I'm going to kind of substitute g for that, at x equals 8, this is when we say, okay, g prime, the inverse prime of 8, is 1 over f prime of something. So our first step is to figure out what that something is. Okay, so this is where I think, okay, here's x and this is f of x. This is an x value of the inverse, which means it was a y value of f of x. So i got to find the value, the x value that went with that. So I start by setting my original equation equal to 8. Okay, now be careful, this is no calculator. How do I get x alone? I can raise both to the 4 thirds power. And think about it for a second, what's 8 to the 4 thirds? That means the cube root of 8 raised to the 4th power. What's the cube root of 8? Q. Q to the 4th, 16. Okay, so 16 was that number that was missing. And that's what goes here. To evaluate, get my answer, i got to do 1 over f prime of 16. Okay, so my next step would be to find what f prime of x is. f prime of x is the derivative of the f equation. It's 3 fourths x to the subtract 1, negative 1 fourth. Which is the same as saying 3 over 4 times the fourth root of x the negative one-fourth power mean that's in the denominator, fourth root. We wanted to find f prime of 16. So that's 3 over 4 times the fourth root of 16. What is the fourth root of 16? 2 to what power? 2 to the fourth power gives you 16. So that's 2. So this is 3, this is 2 over 4 times 2, which is 8. Okay, so finally I can go back over here and say my answer is 1 over 3 eighths, which means my final answer is complex fraction, multiply top and bottom by 8, 8 thirds. Okay, so I think the one you see on the quiz tomorrow is going to look pretty close to that. So make sure you look through that and understood everything that we did. All right, two more, and I'm done. Number eight, limit as x goes to zero of sine inverse of x over x. What you should what should you do with any limit you see tomorrow? Plug it in. Sine inverse of zero. Sine inverse, remember, get rid of here. Zero is a quadrantal. It's this spot because sine is the y value. So this is equal to 0. This is angle 0 over 0. You need it to be 0 over 0 to use l'hopital. So by l'hopital, what's the derivative of the top? 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. It's the derivative of sine inverse. Over, what's the derivative of the bottom? The derivative of x is just 1. Make sure you say evaluated at x equals 0 in this case. When you plug in 0, what do you get? 1 over radical 1 minus 0 squared. It's 1 over radical 1. Answer is 1. All right, now the last one is a little review from the previous test, which just may show up again. The half-life. of element x is 140 days. 
this material will no longer be useful. After 95%, has disintegrated. When will this happen? Okay, it's a half-life question. Do you remember the formula you have to use with half-life always? y equals a e to the kt. And there's kind of two steps. They tell you the half-life is 140 days. So that means the amount remaining is one half. If I started with all of it, let's say I started with one, the amount left is half of it after 140 days. So you could say e to the k times 140. So that's what you have to know to set up when you see a length of a half-life. This is going to help us figure out what that constant is. So obviously dividing by one half, nothing's going to change. To get rid of the E, we're going to take the ln of both sides. So ln of one half equals k times 140. And you will get that k is ln of one half divided by 140. I essentially want to know when is 95% going to disintegrate. That's a little misleading. What's going to go in for Y, do you think? 0 0.05, because if 98% or 95% disintegrated, that means 5% remains. And Y is always the amount remaining. So we're going to have 0.05 equals 1 e to the k value we just found, so ln of 1 half over 140 t. I want to know when there's going to be 5% remaining. So we're going to take the ln of both sides again. I'll have ln of 0.05 equals ln of 1 half over 140 t. And if I want to get t alone, Multiply by 140, 140 ln of 0 0.05 equals ln of 1 half t, and divide by ln of 1 half. So t is 140 ln of 0 0.05 divided by ln of 1 half. And since tomorrow's test is no calculator, that's where we have to, have to leave it. I know it's an ugly number. If you wanted to plug it in, if you did have a calculator, it's about 605 days. I don't expect you to do this tomorrow because I don't expect you to touch your calculator while you're taking this test. So that would be the answer. All right. All right, you should all hopefully have this review sheet for the quiz as well. I would recommend spending the rest of time today doing this review sheet, checking your answers, seeing if you understand how to do all of it. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have on this review sheet. I obviously will not be answering questions about the actual quiz that you take, but you may ask any question you want on here. Use those notes we took today as good study tools for the quiz as well. And this is your last new quiz, so good luck.